Welcome back to Fairies Tutorials. In today's session, we'll be looking at the production of... Yes, you got it right. We'll be looking at the production of oils. Stay tuned! Four, food, science, and technology. Still looking at the production of common food commodities and today we'll be looking at oils. Now guys, let us look at the learning targets. Now, by the end of today's session, you should be able to define the terms cooking oils and textured vegetable proteins. Give four examples of textured vegetable proteins identify four types of oil and also to outline the steps involved in the production of soy bean oils good now let us look at the description of cooking oils what are cooking oils cooking oil is a plant or animal fat used in frying baking and other types of cooking it is also used in food preparation and flavorings not involving heat, such as salad dressings and bread dips. Cooking oil is typically a liquid at room temperature, although some oils that contain saturated fat, such as coconut oil, palm oil, and palm kernel oil are solid. Good. So cooking oil is typically liquid at room temperature, although some oils such as that which, which contain saturated fats such as coconut oil, palm oil, and palm kernel oil are solid at room temperature. There are a wide variety of cooking oils from plant sources such as olive oil, palm oil, soybean oil, canola oil, corn oil, peanut oil, and other vegetable oil. Let us look at pictures of the different types of oil. The first one is olive oil, right? The next picture showcases palm oil. There's also palm kernel oil. When it comes on to palm kernel oil, only the kernel of the palm seed is used whereas with the palm oil the entire seed is used right or fruit is used now the next we have is soybean oil right canola oil corn oil peanut oil and now we're going to look at the production of oil specifically we're going to look at how soybean is used to produce oil and we'll also be looking at textured vegetable proteins in shortening TVP now soybean oil is a vegetable oil extracted from the seeds of soybean it is one of the most widely consumed cooking oils and as you can see here this is what the soybeans this is what the plant looks like and afterwards you can see where it is removed from the from the pad and a picture of the what the oil looks like as well now guys let us zoom in on the production of soybean oil so the first step as you can see is soybeans then they are cleaned after cleaning they are crushed they are also softened refined pressed extrude roll and uh, to produce the finished product which is the oil now guys let us look at these steps in a little bit more detail right now cleaning of soybeans so the soybeans are first cleaned dried and dehulled prior to oil extraction now extraction of soybean oil the process is the soybeans are first cut into flakes which are put in a percolation extractors and emerge with a solvent 
normally hexene. Now, the oil is then purified. So the crude soybean oil still contains many oil insoluble and oil soluble impurities that needs to be removed. Now, after the oil has been purified, that's the final stage of the production of oil. However, hydrogenation may take place and this process will increase the stability of the soybean oil and will make it less liquid. However, this process will create more saturated fats and will reduce the favorable unsaturated fats. Now, let's put it all together. To produce soybean oil, the soybeans are cracked, adjusted for moisture content, heated, rolled into flakes, and solvent extracted with hexanes. The oil is then refined, blended for different applications, and sometimes hydrogenated. Soybean oils, both liquid and partially hydrogenated, are sold as vegetable oil or are ingredients in a wide variety of processed foods. Most of the remaining residue, which is the soya bean meal, is, is, is used to create animal feed. Now, what, is, what are textured vegetable proteins? Have you ever seen this image before? Do you know what food product is this? As we go on, you'll see if you were correct. Now, textured or texturized vegetable protein, TVP, also known as textured soy protein or soy meat or soy trunks, is a defatted soy flour product a byproduct of extracting soybean oil, right? So the flour product, this product is made as a byproduct of extracting oil from soybeans, right? Now, TVP is frequently used as a meat replacement or in some cases, a meat extender. It has a texture that resembles ground beef. So it's an ideal meat substitute in spaghetti sauces, chilies, tacos, and even hamburgers. TVP can also be used as an additive in meat dishes to help a little meat go a long way. Now, let us look at some examples of TVP, or textured vegetable protein. So we have two examples here. We have tofu and we also have veggie chunks. Now these are examples of TVPs and remember that TVP stands for textured vegetable protein, right? So you may also have veggie mints, you have veggie burgers, you have veggie balls, but these products tend to look like meat, they are meat substitute, but they are made from soya bean oil, soya bean, and they are rich in protein. Let us look at the production of margarine. But remember that margarine is from plant source, right? And oils from plant sources are usually liquid at room temperature. But why is it margarine is solid? Can you tell? Before we go further, it is important for us to set the foundation, right? So we'll be looking at these three key terms, hydrogenation, emulsify, and stabilizer, or we could say stabilize. Now, definition of key concepts. Hydrogenation is the process where hydrogen is added to oils to make them more solid or spreadable. Hydrogenated oils can be sold directly as spreads, but are also used in the food industry in the manufacture of many foodstuffs such as biscuits and cakes. So, hydrogenation is a process by which hydrogen is added to oils to make them more solid. 
So in the case of margarine, remember that plant oils are what? Normally liquid at room temperature with the exception for palm oil and coconut oil. Now in order to produce a more solid type of uh, plant source fat or oils, then hydrogen is added during the manufacturing process to change the texture of the oil. Now, let us look at how this is done. So what you're seeing here, you're seeing the margarine, right? And you're also seeing a sample of oil. Now, with the process of hydrogenation, what happens is the, the structure of the oil is now changed to, 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 be a, to be linear, right? So they are straight so they can compact and fit tightly together. Now, imagine... Uh, let us see now. So imagine a box of toys. They have different shapes, different sizes, and also a box, box of sand. What do you notice are the differences, right? Now, with the box of toys, their texture will be different. So they will have a kink in their st structure. So based on their shapes, they can't pack together solidly, right? Now, what hydrogenation does is to ensure that the structure of these oils becomes linear or straight so that they can pack closely together and hence we have solid uh, fats made from plant source. Now the next term that we'll be looking at is emulsify, right? Emulsification is a process of creating a stable dispersion of two immensable phases, meaning two things that cannot come together. So think about oil and water. Can they come together? Right, now typically water and oil, as I said before. Now common food emulsions include some sauces, margarine, salad dressings, and also mayonnaise, right? And in this case, seeing that we're looking at oil, we're looking at the margarine. So let us look at the process. What does the process of emulsifying or emulsion, what, what it does? Now, based on the emulsifier that is used, now homogenization takes place, right? And that, that the purpose of that is to prevent these items from separating. Now, in the production of margarine, sometimes water are added or milk is added in the production of margarine, good? Now, to prevent them from separating, an uh, emulsion or has to be added or emulsifier has to be added so emulsion can take place. And when emulsion takes place now, then the particles, the water and the oil, or the milk and the oil cannot separate from each other. Good. Now, let us look at stabilizers. Now, a stabilizer is an additive to food which helps to preserve its structure. So after the emulsion takes place, a stabilizer is added to help keep the structure together, right? Typical uses include preventing oil, water emulsions from separating in products such as salad dressing or we may even say margarine. Now, let us look at the production process of margarine. To produce margarine, first oils are extracted. Example, by pressing from seeds and then refined as we looked at in soybeans, right? Now, oils may undergo a full or partial hydrogenation process to solidify, solidify them. Therefore, margarine is made by blending edible oils with milk or water and other optional ingredients. Let us look at the production of process of margarine in more details. So step one, we have seven, seven steps here and we're starting with step one. Step one, the oils are refined. Step two, the oils are hydrogenated and then deodorized. Step three, flavors, preservatives, salt, color, and vitamins A and D are added. Step four, cultured pasteurized milk is blended in. 
Step 5. The mixture is emulsified and stabilized. And remember, we just look what those ter terms are. Step 6. The margarine is chilled and textured. So example, persons may get black margarine to purchase or whipped margarine. Right? And step 7. It is finally packed either in paper or plastic tubs so let's go again step one the oils are refined good two oils are hydrogenated so depending on how solid or semi-solid they want the margarine the amount of hydrogen may be altered good it is then deodorized to remove any undesired flavor step three flavors preservatives salts colors and the vitamins a and d are added Right, simple means that it is fortified with vitamins A and D. Step four, cultured pasteurized milk is blended in. Good. And when we speak of cultured milk, what is added? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, and to pasteurize milk, they kill harmful microorganisms. Step five, the mixture is emulsified and stabilized to prevent the contents from separating. Step six, the margarine is chilled and textured and step seven, it is finally packaged, whether in paper or in top, right? Good. Now let us look at types of margarine. So the two types that we'll be looking at are block margarine and soft margarine. Now block margarine, this is of similar hardness to butter. It is suitable for pastry making and if softened, can be used for creaming. The next one we have is soft margarine. It's less hydrogenated and suitable for creaming. It can be spread and used straight from the refrigerator, but it is not suitable for pastry making as it is too soft for rubbing in. Checkpoint. Define the following terms. Cooking oil, textured vegetable proteins, hydrogenation. Give four examples of textured vegetable proteins. Identify four types of oil. Outline the steps involved in the production of soybean oils. And also outline the steps involved in the production of margarine suggested portfolio entries one create a brochure on textured vegetable proteins the brochure should include the following definition of tvp six types of tvp foods and also suggest cooking methods for preparation of each of the foods identified you have made it to the end of the video don't forget to like, subscribe, and also share with persons who you know will find this video useful. Thank you for making it.